the questions I get asked most about is what is Lean Six Sigma? Uh, usually people ask me, what do you do for the city? And I tell them, well, I manage the Lean Six Sigma program. And they say, what? And I have to kind of go through and explain what it is. But as many of you know, and everybody that's in here that's been exposed to Lean Six Sigma, it's about reducing waste, and reducing variation, and ultimately improving all the efficiencies in our processes. You know, Lean Six Sigma ha has a long history coming from the Toyota manufacturing process uh, through Motorola for, Lean, for Six Sigma itself. And I've been fortunate that I actually was able to train under some of the people that actually developed Six Sigma at Motorola and brought those ideas and brought those things here. And also I'd like to thank Susan because if it wasn't for Susan, I wouldn't be here at all. <laughs> uh, but Six Sigma, what, the framework we like to use is not necessarily PDCA, but we like to use the methodology itself, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. That is the core of what we do and that is how we actually improve processes throughout the city itself. In five short years, we've changed the culture of how we look at our jobs at City Hall. For whichever department you're in, you're seeing new ways and looking with new eyes on how to improve your departments. And your friends from other departments are stepping up and helping you with that process. As I walk around the room and I hear your stories, I'm saying some of these things I didn't even know needed the process done. But others, you just wonder why we had not done them. And for all of them, they make a huge difference. They improve the efficiency of your day-to-day -day jobs and the effectiveness of how we are being good stewards of those taxpayer dollars and all the dollars that we're entrusted with as a community. So you've, made, you've just made a huge impact on this community, and I don't think we should take that lightly. You are to be commended, and we're so proud of what you've done. Well, it's not been that long since we were celebrating two million. It seems like yesterday, and so we're already here talking about five million. So you can see that flywheel that I talk about a lot of times is really starting to gain momentum. We are now up to 56 black belts and green belts. Um, we probably will not be adding any more black belts, uh, but we do need more green belts, and we'll continue to do that each year uh, with a class, a new class. Over 25 percent of the workforce now has been trained. Uh, in the Lean Six Sigma methodologies. Um, and we now have 35 projects in progress, 92 uh, actually over 92 projects now completed. We met yesterday and there were several more that are going to be completed soon. And as has been, been mentioned, over $5 million in savings. But remember when we started the process, what I would tell everybody is that it's not necessarily about cost savings. That's great. We want to see that. But we want to save time because we knew that we weren't going to be adding more employees during the recession. Remember, this was 2009. So what's more impressive to me is that we eliminated 36,925 hours permanently out of the time uh, of, of your days. Uh, you all did that. So that's the equivalent of over 17 uh, positions uh, that we basically repurposed or we used that time to do other things because we're a growing city, right? So that was very impressive. And then for me, the thing that's, that I enjoy the most is times like these where I can just go down these lines and talk to you all individually about what you've done and the impact that you have had on this organization individually and then collectively look at, look at this. Um, when I go and I talk to my colleagues about what we're doing, I hear things like, well, you know, that's nice, but can you sustain that? Does your council support it? Does the community even know what it is? And it takes effort. Uh, it, it takes events like this. And over time, if you keep pushing that flywheel, it's amazing what we can do together. So it is here to stay, and we're going to show everybody else how it's done. We are the example now nationwide. I don't think any, any other city has deployed Lean Six Sigma, Sigma to the degree that we have. Hi, uh, my name is Heather Bolstridge, and I am an employee for the Parks Department. And I've done a couple projects, but my first black belt project that I did that probably has made the most impact was at the Senior Center. And basically we had several thousands, tens of thousands of dollars worth of inventory there. And unfortunately the way that it was packed up and how it was laid out made it not only difficult to know what we had, but also to know where it was. So what I did was I went in to basically check and see how long it would take to find a certain item. And from there we determined it took about 
14 minutes for somebody to find one item. Through that, what we did was we went through and we inventoried each bin and all of the different things around the rooms, and then we determined the best placement for each of the items. We redistributed them in bins, we put together an inventory, we got rid of excess materials, and we reconfigured the layout of where all of the items would go. And then we taught all of the employees about not only where they could find all of the things that they needed, but how to look in the inventory that we put together for them, how to add items and delete items, and how to re reuse and put things back where they needed to go so that next time they needed the item they'd be able to get it out as well. Um, from that we have so far saved about $21,000 in inventory in both soft and hard dollar savings and actually most of that is in hard dollars because we've reduced so much in the inventory and we're monitoring how much is coming in and out. We're making sure that everything is being put where it needs to be put after putting together the 5S and we are hoping that we can continue this 5S thing of our spaces as we move forward in other areas. Okay, my project was uh, extending heavy duty all changes and uh, what we did was uh, we looked at synthetic fluids. Currently we're doing PMs all changes every 250 hours on our heavy duty vehicles and the all that we're using it's capable of going at least double to triple that. So we started a project, we looked at it uh, just based on a heavy duty PM, we're spending about $300 parts and labor and uh, so we're thinking we can save $300 every PM by uh, using this synthetic awl and extending our heavy duty awl changes from 250 hours to 750. So what we do is uh, we take an awl sample of our uh, diesel trucks, the heavy duty diesel ones, we take awl samples and those all samples, the reports tell us the all is still good, it's normal, all of the uh, additive packages are still uh, built up, nothing's deteriorating, the fluid is not deteriorating or contaminated. So we take that and if at every 250, 250 hours, we're going to still continue the sample. We're going to pull a sample of the all. We're going to go ahead and look at it. If the sample comes back good, well, we're going to keep running it. We're going to run it another 250 hours. And we'll do that up until 750. Every 250 hours, we're going to sample it. And uh, once we get to 750, we're going to drain it and fill it. Even if it's still good, we're going to drain it and fill it with fresh oil. And that's kind of the project. We've got it set up. We think based on uh, 420 heavy-duty PMs, we're thinking we're going to have a $15,000 savings. And uh, based on that information, you know, that's kind of the whole extent of the project. Specific to the engineering services. Uh, we looked at uh, the process that we go through for uh, street closures and parade permits. It was before at one point uh, had three different applications and it, it became a, a uh, where does this application go now and who's got it and, and it just was a very convoluted mess. So uh, we were able to uh, utilize our tools and our toolbox and go through the process of what do we really need, what are the basics, let's com combine them into one single application and we could get it around you know, electronically. And this is an effort to really help the citizens of Tyler uh, in their needs. In specific to, our, to, to us, it was for parade permits or street closures or anything like that. So it's been exciting to see this process uh, come to fruition as we uh, utilize these tools and uh, can make it an easier process, a more simple process. It's, it's funny, it's one of those things that you look back and you're like, well, why, why, why didn't we make this change sooner? And why didn't we think about this sooner? And uh, so it gives us a good opportunity to, to take the steps. And then obviously the city manager is in support of everything that we can do to streamline our processes and, and make things more convenient for our citizens and for staff members as well. My project focuses on the, the quality of the GIS data for city-owned properties. We have a total of about 1,243 city-owned properties inside of our GIS. Of those, we only have 63 that have the complete information on them, such as deed information and everything it is that we need to know about a property. So every time we have to go out and find out information on a property, 
we have to go through approximately about 200 minutes per piece on each property, researching those to find out, do we truly own the property? When did we acquire the property? What is the deed information? Since all that is not readily available. So we spend several hours of time each year looking into city-owned properties, and we believe that we can really cut that down and save up to as much as $20,000 a year, mainly in soft savings and the time that we're spending doing all the research on the city-owned properties. Given we come up with a good procedure to make sure that GIS gets this information and it gets entered into the system correctly, so therefore it can be found in the future.